Hey guys, this is Hector from Vector Graphics. Today we're gonna be creating uh, digital art. This is gonna be a freestyle. I'm gonna like go straight and show you the process. And um, if I make a mistake, I'm going to keep going. I'm not gonna stop. So you can see how to recover from those mistakes when you are doing the same thing. As always, if you have any idea, if you have any um, suggestion of what you want me to do next, please leave a comment in the comment section down below and don't forget to like subscribe and the little bell this is gonna be fun um, so let's do it so here we are this is the, the beginning the interface that we get when we open Photoshop we're gonna go to file new and this is the new document uh, dialog. Uh, we're gonna do eight by 10. Uh, resolution 300 and the color mode, let's go to RGB and let's hit create. So we have the canvas now. So the first thing I want to do is to bring over the background, okay? So I'm gonna be bringing over this beautiful picture of the Josemite um, site and um, as you can see it only occupies the first half of the of the whole canvas and this is this is on purpose why because I'm gonna substitute those clouds here with these ones okay and this is a really easy way to do it I'm gonna like position my clouds the new ones here with command T I'm gonna scale it up so it, it, it occupies the whole frame and I'm gonna position this picture like this. I want to I want to retain a little bit of this uh, lens flare that we have here because we're gonna use a lens flare uh, at the end. Okay, so I hit enter, and now I'm gonna apply a mask to this uh, image so I can erase selectively parts of that image to blend it up with the other one. So I pressed. E, the, the key E, that's the eraser, and with the um, mask selected, I'm gonna start erasing. Oh, and you should have the white color on the foreground, okay? White means that the bottom layer is gonna show, black means that the top layer is gonna show. So if I want to erase the top layer, I'm gonna use the white color here, and I'm gonna start erasing away like really generally like not I'm not gonna worry about the details right now because I want to uncover these uh, mountains right here first of all there you go now uh, you can see here we're getting a little bit of um, the other the, the ending of, of the original picture so we go backwards so we press the key X and that's gonna switch the color from white to black to the foreground and now I'm gonna bring back this sky over here this sky over here and I can go ahead and and kind of use this sky that the new sky as um, a little bit of fog like if we had fogs like fog on the on the mountains okay so let me get rid of this sharp edge over here Every time, check always this this here. You're gonna see that I'm pressing X constantly, like switching between um, erasing and uh, bringing back that layer, okay? So we don't have any hard edges right now. And as you can see, it looks really good. Not too realistic, but this is digital art, so photo manipulation, so it's not supposed to look really reali realistic. It needs to, it needs to be in the realm of realism but it, 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 it don't have to be real i mean people should notice that it's not real because what we're gonna do now is outrageous so let's bring this up so we position this cat this little cute cat over here and there's a couple of things that we need to do to this cat before we can start using it 
The first thing that you're gonna notice is that the ear is missing. So part of the ear, the tip, is missing. So we're gonna we are going to reconstruct that that tip. Okay. So whenever you bring a photo from um, from outside inside a canvas, Photoshop by default is gonna bring it over as a smart object. So in order to be to to be able to um, manipulate this content that this smart object has. You go to this little square here, this little icon that you have, like you see in the layer, and you double click it. And Photoshop is gonna open the that layer is gonna open it on a on a new document. So now we're gonna go ahead, change the white as the background, grab the crop tool, and let's make space to create that little. Um, Ear. The reason why I put the the I, I made the background as white is because if I had the black background, this is what's gonna happen. You see, we get the black. We get a, a, the background is gonna be black, so we don't want that. We want the 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 dominant color on this picture is white, so we want it to be white. We go ahead. We make the space for the tip of the ear. And we're gonna use the clone tool right now. This is the clone tool. We come here to this side, we zoom in, and I'm gonna grab anywhere inside the ear. And I'm gonna, I'm going like with 70%, I'm gonna create more or less the shape of the ear, like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna with the bracket um, keys you can go up and you can go down on the on the brush uh, size so i want to more or less mimic this amount of um sharpness that has that this has here so the smaller i go with the brush um size the sharper sharper is gonna become so i'm gonna go like let's say here and I'm gonna, I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. There you go. Here, as you can see, I have a, an active artifact, so I don't like that. I'm gonna fix it. Brush, uh, okay. Hold on. There you go. So now we have the ear completed, but as you can see here, we have a lot of um, hair on the tip. So I want that on the other side too. So what we can do is grab a little bit, grab a little bit of this ear here. That by the way is a lasso tool. You press Command C, Command B, and now I have that small tip that I got, I got it separate on another uh, layer. Now with a uh, command T to transform, I'm gonna right click once the transformation um, container is on and I'm gonna flip it horizontal, right? So let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's position it around here, more or less. This is good. Now with a mask and the razor tool, making sure that we have the white color to be able to erase. I'm gonna erase and I'm gonna blend it up, leaving just the hair like so. There you go. So as you can see, now we have the ear perfectly done so instead of flattening this image I like personally I like to go ahead double click on the background to make it a, a modifiable um, layer uh, right click convert to a small object and now I have the whole thing inside another box so this box I'm gonna bring over 
and this is the one I'm gonna use because in case that ear is not good for some reason I still can go in and I have the two layers right here you see so I can go back and modify the ear so it's non-destructive I'm not destroying the whole thing okay now we can close it up this one I don't need and we have the cat now in position so now what we're gonna do as you can see this cat has a lot of fur right and this is impossible to cut out in a realistic way so what I like to do is since this cat has a kind of a white background I'm gonna use the mod the um, blending mode multiply multiply what's gonna do is bring is take off everything that's white absolutely everything so as you can see I, I'm, I'm left with the cat but all the white is gone all the white is right now is transparent and that's cool and you're gonna see why in them in a minute so now what I can appreciate here is that it has a big like a big um you know it wasn't exactly white so we have these hard edges around the picture we're gonna get rid of that of that not by erasing it but by applying a level effect so what we are gonna do here is bring over the highlights to the left until the until that edge is gone mostly gone so but now i don't want by the way what i did to uh, um if i if i apply this like this th this effect like this it's gonna pl be applied to everything and i don't want that so in order to apply it only to the cat i have i pressed option i stood in the middle of the two layers and click so now it's only affecting the cat nothing else so now i don't want it to affect the cat per se i was only trying to get rid of the whole box so i'm gonna take that effect out of the cat on the actual cat and if you see here we have the same thing that we had here that we used to get rid of the bottom of the of the clouds that's a mask so we're gonna use this mask this mask on this effect to erase that effect of the cat so with the e key pressing e and the white on i'm going to erase all the effect of the cat i don't want the cat to be affected by that highlights uh, at all okay so i think i got them all let me see it doesn't matter that i go out of the of the cat a little bit as long as i'm not bringing uh, any hard, hard edges i'm good Okay, so if I turn off here, I can see that everything is, is in order. Uh, I think here we have a little bit, okay, and here. So, yep, let me bring back a little bit of the hair here. There you go, and a little bit here. and we are good let's go ahead and, and grab these two layers press command G and name it background that's gonna group those layers and these two I'm gonna group and call cat and inside that I'm gonna grab them both again and I'm gonna press the link tool over here and that's what will happen is that if I move if I move the cat everything else is gonna move with the cat so it's not gonna be like the defect is not gonna go off um, it's not gonna go off so everything is gonna stay in position and we are good to go so now that we have the cat separated I want to bring back all the white that we missed on this cat so what I'm gonna do is create a new layer if we go to this uh, icon over here this is a new layer um, 
icon. So you press it and now we have this layer beha behind, below the, the actual cat. So with, um, with the brush tool, I'm gonna go make the foreground, I mean the brush, I'm gonna make it white and I, I'm simply going to paint wherever the cat is. Everything that is inside the cat, I'm gonna paint. So we keep painting wherever the cat fur is. Let's get inside a little bit. It doesn't matter that I go out a little bit. It doesn't matter. Everything is good. You'll see why now. So we are really good. We're almost done. Let me see. You can see here a hard, hard edge there. We had to fix that. Okay, we're good. I think that that hard edge is from the, no, it's from the cat. So let me go back and, uh, okay, looks like I erased too much from here. So I'm gonna paint back with the black. I paint again and it's gone. The same thing here. There you go. Now we're gonna apply another mask to the white and with the eraser tool, we're gonna get rid of the excess that we have anywhere in the cat. So for example here, and most notably here. So this is, a, this is something I like to do. I like to go with the flow of the hair or the, um, the fur. If you see that the, the hair is going that way, I'm gonna do it that way also. I'm gonna be erasing this way. So it looks natural. Here we have a little bit. And there we go. So we have the cat right now, perfectly positioned. But as you can see here on the bottom, I have its legs. I don't want that. So the cool thing about groups is that I can go ahead and apply a mask to that group, all the thing, all the, the, the whole thing, and erase part of that um, group. So I'm gonna do that now. And I'm going to blend this, um, the cat with the um, landscape, okay? So the trees are going like this. I'm gonna go like this while uh, erasing. So I first I do um, a general pass, right? I do a general one, like so. For example, I don't know. This is good. Let's do it like this. All right. Let me bring back a little bit the fur here. And now we're gonna go small and we're gonna bring like the trees. We're gonna try to bring them like if they are in front of the cat, okay? Because some of them are, some of them aren't. So I try to bring them like this. I go super big 
I go 20 in opacity right here, you can see 20, you achieve these numbers by pressing 2, 4, 5, whatever, and they, they're gonna go up and down. And right here on the bottom, not on the cat, on the bottom, I'm gonna soften a little bit the cat. And then I'm gonna bring this back. This looks like kind of silly, but it, it actually works. It's very subtle, but it works. So now that we have the cat kind of um, like integrated on this background, we can go ahead and um, put something that I like uh, to use to, to give the brain some context. So right now we have the, the mountains and we know the cat is big, but if I if I drop some birds, right? And I make them really small, being careful with the trees, I mean I'm gonna I'm going to to more or less try to compare and maintain a proportion. Since the birds uh, have a white background, I can go ahead and use multiply again. And uh, I'm gonna I'm going to lower the opacity a, li a little bit. So when I do that, instantly when when the brain sees that, the brain goes, "Oh my goodness, that cat is really really big. It's really gi gigantic." So. It's a good way of putting some perspectives. I'm gonna put a, a more in the foreground right here, uh, but these ones are gonna be like right, almost in front of us, okay? So we're gonna be tweaking this so it looks better. Uh, right now, we're, we're going, it's looking good. So let's, now what I want to include here, what I would like to include is a human, um, element so let's let's bring up a hiker so the hiker is facing right let's make it face to the left side okay let's make it a little bit smaller and uh, yeah so let me let me let me create some uh, groups here and here the hiker okay so far so good now the hiker I am gonna cut out because I tested it before and I didn't like how it looked if I use the multiply blending mode so I'm gonna I'm going to cut it out in order to do that I double click on the smart object I come here And start cutting so I'm gonna speed this up but um, so you, you know more or less what I'm doing here okay one quick note I like to uh, cut inside a little bit inside of the actual uh, object so I get rid of some artifacts and um, you know highlights that the object might have this is by no means a perfect cut right now. I'm going really fast so we can get ahead and finish the tutorial. I don't want you guys to get bored. So, so let's speed up again. So now we have the hiker um, cut out. I'm gonna trim everything that's transparent. So I have the hiker only. I'm gonna convert it to a smart object and I'm gonna bring it over to the main composition. Now this one is out, this one is in, 
control T, right click, flip horizontal. Let's bring it over a little bit. Let's get it down. And I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So the first thing I notice is that I need to color correct a little bit uh, this image. Let me give it a little bit of blacks so it match the whole composition as much as possible. Um, there we go. That's it. So we have the hiker, we have the, the, the doves, we have everything in position. Oh, I want to bring over the moon. Yes, the moon for you guys. That's cheesy. So let's position it here, around here more or less. Yes. And I'm going to choose a blending mode that looks good because this is supposed to be affected by the atmosphere and if the sky is blue the moon should have that same feeling more or less you know what I know which one works it's gonna be the soft light that's that one's cool this is really subtle I don't want it to be showing at all like too much so I'm going to apply a mask Grab the um, press E for the eraser. I'm going to erase away like so. So I'm gonna I'm going to take out the moon wherever the, the they intercept with the with the clouds, and then we have it. There we have it. If, I, if it's too uh, way too light, I can go ahead and duplicate it. And it looks good. So there we go. Now that we have everything uh, in position, first I'm going to work a little bit of pe or on perspective. Okay. Uh, so the foreground should be a little bit um, blurred and the background it shouldn't be. So, you know. In photography that doesn't work like that exactly not all the time but here for effects purposes I'm gonna do it like that so the birds let's go to filter blur box blur and let's apply a 14 I think all right a six is okay now the hiker, we do the same thing. We go to filter. This time is I'm not gonna apply the, the, the box because it looks weird, I don't know why exactly. But I'm gonna apply a, a Gaussian one. So the hiker is gonna be more blurred than the doves because the doves are on a different plane that, than the, the hiker. So the hiker, I believe there is okay. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do, because I, I want to blur this line over here of trees, I'm going to duplicate this layer, the background. What I did there, let me go back, was press Option, click, and drag. And it's going to duplicate it. You can do the same thing by right clicking on the layer and click Duplicate Layer. It's going to let you name it. And there you go. So to the top layer, I'm going to apply the same box blur that I applied the doves, okay? But that what that's gonna do is like it's gonna blur everything up. I only want the the like only the this side over here. So what I'm gonna do is apply a mask, press E. And I'm going to erase everything that I don't want it, that I don't want to be blurred. Okay, the mountains, they should not be blurred. And these trees over here, they should not be blurred either. Okay. And then we go in for a little more specific work. I'm taking 
like I'm doing this like broadly but now I'm going to go down in size I'm going to switch to bring back the blurness and I'm going to blur the trees in the foreground you know what this is too this is too strong is it 30 let's put it in 20 so we have a little bit more control of what we're doing here uh, there we go this here this here this one here this here these big ones and this is definitely blur here and the final Let me see. This is, should be blurred. These two. This one definitely. And uh, as you can see, I'm establishing. I'm 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 getting like a three-dimensional feel to the to the photo, right? Because now we are playing with our brains, telling the telling the brain that hey, this is really near, and you know, it's pretty cool. So here, I think we're good here. Now, what I'm going, what I want to do is to add a little bit of fog. Okay, so to do that, on in front of the cat, actually in front of the birds, on top of the birds. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to paint it with a paint bucket tool white. Now I'm going to lower the opacity, let's say to 42, more or less. I think that's good. And I'm going to apply a mask. So, how fog works is more or less as we just did right now the nearer the object the less affected by the flop by the fog so i'm going to switch to white pressing x key and i'm going to erase the fog from the foreground but maintain it in the background like the farther we go the more fog we're gonna have Okay, so we go like so, perfect, I think I'm gonna give it a little bit more opacity, that's good, uh, that's, that's good, let me, let me make this one more relevant here by erasing the fog on it, there you go. There we go, looking better. There. And next, next I'm gonna bring the sun. I told you that I wanted to maintain that uh, lens flare there. So let's use it. Now with this, with the lens flares, when they where they when they are um, positioned. <laughs> where they are positioned on top of our black background, we can do the same as with the multiply, but instead, instead with a screen option, okay? As you can see, it went away. And what this does is subtle also. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I have allergies or something. And I'm gonna erase all the hard edges that it has you know what i'm not liking this uh let me see let me see how this looks let me go full transformers on this thing screen oh i know why i know why okay okay the fog is too high so I need to bring up the sky a little bit. There we go. Now we're talking. 
I scale this a little bit. Let me take care of the um, of any hard edge that this might have around here. And I think we're good. This one is going. I don't need that one. This is the moon. Let's keep this organized because this is important. Moon. Uh, yep. This is looking pretty good so far. So this is looking pretty good. Um, yeah, you know what I like to do sometimes? The good old clouds. These will, this will um, have two purposes. Purpose number one is going to cover any mistakes that uh, this image has, and it's gonna blend the cat a little bit better with the background. And number two is gonna again give our brains help by deciding how big that that cat actually is. So it's a point of reference that the brain is gonna use to to go. Wow, that cat is big, man. Like so. Oh, these allergies. So we bring them down a little bit and name them clouds. There we go. This is going to be lens flare. And this is going to be the fog. As you can see, we have everything organized. That's key, guys. That's really, really important. Uh, these projects, this is a simple one. These projects can get extremely it's extremely crowded over here so you want to be uh, organized since the beginning uh, you can also go and grab uh, let's say the cat the birds and the hiker those are living stuff so let's let's make them red the clouds on the fog they're gonna be uh, made of the same stuff Let, let's make them blue and the moon and the lens flare let's make them yellow and the background I always do gray so now we have a color code that we can that, that we can use to you know to stay organized that's the most important thing so now that we have the whole image set up we have to do something that we should have done in the beginning man Ooh. I'm really a bad teacher okay we should save the project we should have done this like a week ago so let's name this cat tutorial that's the first thing we, we have to do save the project and every 10 minutes press command s and it's gonna stay saved we didn't do it at the beginning mm, i apologize for that that's a bad advice uh, not doing that when we should have okay so now that we have the whole thing set up now I'm gonna um, I'm going to press command a command chief C that's gonna copy the whole image and I'm gonna I'm going to press command V what that did was to create a whole layer with everything that, I, that we have here it's, a, it's an image so this image I'm going to show you guys how to how to sharpen this image the best way I know. This is the best option. This is the, the my preferred the, the, the best way I I feel we can do this. There's a bunch of other options that I don't like. For now, let's go to high pass. And this high pass is gonna bring this dialog here, and you can see that's the eye of the cat. We shouldn't go too high because it's gonna it's gonna look obscene. 
uh, let's go rather small so it looks like nothing happened but if we go really really you're gonna see that every shadow in the um, in the picture has this effect applied and that's what we're gonna use to sharpen this image once we have the, the effect applied we go to the blending modes and go to overlay it looks like nothing happened but oh boy if, if it did I don't know if you're appreciating this on YouTube but let let's do this I'm gonna I'm going to duplicate it three times I'm gonna grab them the three and duplicate it again are you seeing what's going on there check it out here if I turn off all this stuff turn it off on I mean off on you see stuff start to happen so we sharpen the image a lot so don't go crazy with this this you know sometimes it get out of hand uh, I think that with two we're good and now we are ready to command s again to save again and what I like to do is to color correct and color grade the my images in Lightroom I don't like to do it on Photoshop so let's get going to Lightroom and let's do the let's do that okay so now we go to the desktop wherever I, I save that image I select it is the PSD and I click import and now we're gonna develop this image okay so the first thing I like to do is give it a little bit I want it to be warm I don't want it to be so cold uh, so I go up I give it a little bit of magenta to give it that that dreamy uh, feel to it exposure is too high let's bring it down a little bit and uh, contrast let's give it a fairly amount highlights let's bring back all those uh, details and the shadows stay where they are the whites can go up a little bit and the blacks let's bring them down a little bit this shadow let me bring them over so I can see this guy a little bit better and there we go now clarity a little bit just a tad uh, the haze no let's haze it a little bit more because I want it to I want it to have that um, the hazy feeling okay vibrance this is photo manipulation so it should be striking it should be colorful <coughs> sorry Now we go to saturation. I want to bring up the sky. Give it a little bit blue also. Without it, we have to be careful because artifacts start happening here. Um, I want to bring the oranges a little bit down. It's too much. Yellows and uh, green. Yes, let's bring. Bring it up. It's looking pretty good. Now I like to center the attention of the spectator on the cat. So I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit on the bottom and a little bit from this side. What I did here effectively effectively was leaving all this area here the, the brightest one. So the eyes are gonna go directly to that to that area. Uh, the other thing I can do here is to come and uh, play a little bit with burn. 
and Dutch. So let's burn a little bit this here. Everything that's black and has shadows on it, I want to emphasize. Believe me, this, this makes a hell of a difference. You're gonna see later on. My machine is asking me to change it for a new one to update it. Like, she's screaming to be updated. This is really, really, really slow. Wow. I want to go <clears throat> and apply this effect here on the side this side on, a, on the inner part of the little cat oh you know what we forgot about the shadow of the cat we're gonna do that now so if I turn this off You see, it works. So since what I'm what I'm working on is a PSD here, I can go to the PSD and I can create the shadow of the cat. So I go to the lower part and I go like this. <laughs> that was with the pen tool. I created a shape. And I am gonna transform it in a shape of black. Uh, put it behind the actual white layer of the of the cat. Apply some blur. That's good. Uh, okay. And now let's do, I think it's soft light. Yep. Now this is a curious uh, problem we have here. Remember that we use um, a mask tool on the, on the actual group. Since this shadow is inside that group, it's being affected right now by that mask. So what I'm gonna do is bring it out of that group and there we have it. Nevertheless, we're gonna put a mask on it and soften a little bit this side here. I think it was too much. <laughs> Let me see how this looks. Let's bring it a little bit. Okay. We hit save. Cut tutorial replace it because it's being used on the other side we go back to Lightroom and in theory it should let me copy you know what just in case developing let me copy the settings just in case with we we lose all the the things that we've done let's go to library there it is with the with the shadow, and there it is. Oh, it went away again. What? Oh, there you go. It's because we have to click here, import setting, override settings. So import settings from disk, and there we have it. There you go. So now we're working with the settings of the PSD, the last um, the last thing we did. So this is before, this is after, before, after. Of course, we can keep doing stuff to this photo. Um, I'm really happy with it. I'm not, it's looking good. I think it looks good. Before, after, before, after. And now you can go ahead 
and send it over to your Instagram, um, your Facebook, and it's gonna be, it's gonna have a proportion eight by ten that is gonna fill the whole, the more real estate. It's gonna use the the whole real estate uh, from the from the Instagram uh, screen. So there you go, guys. This is uh, a quick tutorial. I don't know how long it's gonna end up being, but there you go. All right, guys. This is all I have for you today. Um, I hope you like this um, tutorial slash creation. Um, you know, remember about the subscribe, the like, the bell, all that stuff. And um, please leave me comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want me to do next. And um, I'm gonna be considering your your suggestion. Okay. See you on the next one. Hector from Vector Graphics signing out.